is the Home Plate Podcast with Tito Sargent Saves. <laughs> Serving up a triple play of sports, betting, and exclusive interviews with some of the biggest names in the game. Brought to you by Fog Coast Productions. Hey, all right. Welcome back to another episode of the Home Plate Podcast brought to you by Fog Coast Productions. I am your host, Tito Von Flavor, once again joined by my co-hosts, Sabes and Sarge. And we are looking forward to breaking down a four-quarter segment episode today all about March Madness. Really looking forward to what we have ahead today, fellas. March Madness is back. We took a break last year. Just in this quick little intro, I mean, first thing when you think of March Madness saves, what comes straight to mind? March Madness, best month of the year. It's my birthday month. Best time of the year. That's all it is. It's, it's basketball time. <laughs> Tournament time, baby. Sarge, are you fired up? Is the locksmith fired up to make a couple picks, win some money this March? Upset alert. Let's effing go, guys. Well, it's it's exciting cuz I mean it's 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 a bunch of teams, right? You know, it's it's now 68 teams which then comes down to 64 after the playing games. It's school pride. It's one shining moment at the end of the year. It's the fun names for each round, the Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final 4. And you know what, guys? I mean, first quarter of this show, first quarter segment, let's get into mascot versus mascot. Not a lot of people focus on this enough. And let me paint the picture for you guys, okay? Wherever you are, you're walking, you, you know, you've had a fun night with a buddy. Maybe it's a fellow mascot. I was a mascot at Sarah High School, so I, I know what it's like to have to defend myself after a fun, fun night out. Maybe you're leaving a sporting event. You're walking down a dark alley to your car. You come across, you know, some nefarious characters. Let's say it's a blue devil, okay? A blue devil standing across from me in a dark alley. Saves, who's the one mascot that you want standing next to you that you think could go toe for toe with another mascot and say a, a, a 12, 12 round bout. Oof. There's a lot of really good ones out there as far as mascots that could wreck shop, but I'm going with the Baylor bear because who in their right mind would want to fight a bear? They do not fight. They kill. They murder. Just ask Jackie Moon. Didn't work out for him nicely in semi-pro. You know, everybody panic. You're not getting a refund. Spumoni. <laughs> I'm going with the bear. A, a bear, it would absolutely rip your face off in a fight. So it, it, it's a done deal. Baylor bear. TKO. I think a Baylor bear. Yeah, that's a pretty solid pick. And I mean, if you try to run for water, that thing can sw One, it's going to run faster than you. And two, it's going to swim faster than you as well. I mean, what, an, what a majestic creature, the bear. And I should note, we, we want to keep these mascots within the context of 2021, the teams that have made the tournament this year. So... Sarge, Locksmith, I mean, you, you, make, you make bets all the time. You make picks. I, I want to know who you're going to pick, who your odds-on favorite is to protect you or go out and defend you in an alleyway scrap. Fantastic. And I love hearing too fast, too furious. How about the Aztec warrior, the San Diego State University? Ooh. So if you're going to run at me, I have a bow and arrow, whatever I'm going to have in my hand, and I'm going to put it down your forehead. You're dead. <laughs> What do you mean? You're trying to run away from me? I can still throw and hit, it, hit you for 50 yards. You're still dead. So Aztec Warrior, no chance. There's probably more than one or two or three or four or five, six, probably about 100 of them. So uh, good luck in protecting uh, the locksmith. I'm a, I'm a force shield of Aztec Warriors. That's a good point. If you're fighting one, you're probably fighting many, and some of them are probably up in the fire escape the second or third floor above you, just getting ready to <laughs> shoot some bow and arrows down on you while you're in the alleyway. That's a good pick. Now, you guys, you go with a bear, you go with an Aztec warrior. I, I love all that. But you know what? Someone who's really going to defend their cause and come down from the Appalachian Mountains, from the Ozarks, <laughs> I'm going with a West Virginia mountaineer, baby. These guys are crazy, okay? <laughs> they make their own fire. They hunt for their own food. I don't even know if they live in homes. They just live in the mountains. They just live out there. And there's some sort of like native tribal call that I'm going to have to give. And they're just going to show up like uh, like an anchorman. News team assemble. Mountaineers assemble. They're just going to turn around the corner and be ready to wreck shop. And something tells me we've seen something like this before in the past, not too long ago. So I'm going with the Mountaineers. We've got the Baylor Bear. We've got a San Diego State Aztec Warrior. 
and a West Virginia Mountaineer. Tweet us or find us on Instagram at home plate pod and, and tell us what mascot you think would wreck shop in an alleyway. Okay. First quarter out of the way. We're going to transition to the second quarter. Now we've had some fun with our mascots. Let's get into the upset alert of the tournament. Okay. Now everybody's going to talk upsets, right? We see it on every single outlet, every single radio station, every podcast, 10 versus seven, nine versus eight, 11 versus six. You know, I want to really up the stakes a little bit and put the pressure on all of us. 12 seed or higher. Sarge, 12 seed or higher. What's your upset pick? Uh, you know, first weekend of the tournament. I'm going with North Texas. They're called the Mean Green, but they're the Scrappy Eagle. They got four seniors. Um, you don't see that a lot. You always see in the tournament, you know, seniors and upperclassmen kind of take over for a couple of games. Um, Purdue, Purdue's okay. They're, they're pretty good, but um, they're plus seven and a half. That's a little low for a 13 seed, so I'm smelling North Texas. Do you know what the spread is for that game off the top seven, of your head? Of course. Seven and a half. North Texas. Both of those teams are are glacially slow in regards to how they run their offenses. Do you like the under? I'm not touch. I'm just doing upset city alert. Most likely, I mean, of course, but I mean, they could change it up. People throw new things at you during the tournament. I'm just taking the upperclassmen. I'm, you know, know what I know, and those guys have been playing together for four years, so I'll take that. Yeah, no, I, I actually that was that was a pick that I was going to go with. I, you know, because I don't, for the sake of not wanting to be redundant, I am going to switch mine up. I'm going to go with the University of California at Santa Barbara, the Gauchos, pulling an upset at number 12 over the Creighton Jays. Um, Creighton, you know, Doug McDermott went there. That's about all I know about him. Um, I do know quite a, I do know, I do know quite a bit about UCSB, not about their basketball program, but just about, how they like to get down on Friday and Saturday nights. Quite a bit of fun down there. Uh, so I'm hoping every single gaucho and everybody at Santa Barbara City College as well, the honorary gauchos, I hope they're rioting in the streets down on Del Playa after they pull off this upset. I don't know. I just like I like UCSB going to the Sweet 16. I'm crazy, but we'll talk what? about that later. Um, Sabes, who's your upset? I know that you've got you've definitely got some vested interest in this one. I'm excited to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my selection, my upset alert is a little bit biased. I'm going with the Grand Canyon Lopes, the 15 seed over the Iowa Hawkeyes, the two seed. My younger brother went there. He finished a master's program there. He coached there. I actually was lucky enough to attend some games there. In 2016, quick story, Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals, they come, uh, they come out to Phoenix. They play at GCU. Louisville kind of wins the game pretty handedly, but after the game, Rick Pitino says, in my 40-plus years of coaching, that was the toughest crowd environment I've ever seen in my life. And he said, you guys have something special here. I know we're in different times. The crowd didn't play a part of this season, unfortunately, but the Lope Nation deserves this one. I'm going with the Lopes over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Haven't been incredibly pre impressed by the Iowa Hawkeyes team to this point. I think they're a little slow, and it's March Madness, baby. Anything can happen. Grand Canyon. Any Anything can happen, and, and Sabes, you touched on a great point. We, we talked about it a little bit while we were doing pre-show prep. Do upsets become affected by the fact that there will be little to no fans in the stands? I mean, all we want to see is upsets. At least that's what I'm rooting for every single March. And we're obviously calling out some crazy ones. Do you think the team who's the head-on favorite, Sabes, just finds a way to just run it like it's a practice and, and they can just block out all the other noise, literally? Or... Does that kind of freak them out and, and have them playing a little bit a little bit skittish, a little bit scared? I, I guess we'll see, right? It's gonna be one of one of the other. It's either going that like it's going to be a scrimmage for these these more talented teams, or they're gonna play down to the level of the lower seated competition because there are no fans. There is no extra juice in the building to get you amped up and going. I'm interested to see it. We'll talk about our final four predictions later, but I do predict some uh, upsets happening early on in the tournament. We'll see how it matures later on, but it will be interesting to see March Madness with no fans. It's a little bittersweet, isn't it, boys? Well, it's it's better than nothing, right, Sarge? I mean, it's not having March Madness last year was uh, I, I hit a state of of the depression that I didn't know existed. Not having any sports on at all, no college basketball, no screaming at the TV at just a bunch of eighteen and nineteen year old kids as to why they can't cover the spread. I missed that. I can't wait to have that back. 
You're telling me, man. I was, I mean, it's been like one year of COVID. And I remember when it first hit, I was like looking at my ESPN app. It just canceled, canceled, canceled. I'm like, okay, this will stop in a week. And here we are a year later. Um, happy March Madness is back, to say the least. I can't wait to touch every single game and yell all day. I'm going to no. yell at myself. I don't even care. I'm, I just want to yell to, to yell. <laughs> As the great Jerry back. Garcia of the, of the Grateful Dead once said, what a long, strange trip it's been. Nice to be back. We have, we have a third quarter of action coming up, a fourth quarter, and a two-minute warning. But first, we're going to hit a little bit of halftime. Just a couple minutes to remind you of our sponsors and a couple fun things that are going on during the tournament time this year. Uh, a reminder that this podcast is brought to you by Fog Coast Productions. And also, if you're looking for a fun hang during the March Madness tournament for the entire tournament this year, all of March, join me down at my restaurant at Momo's, located at 760 2nd Street. We are right across the street from the home of the San Francisco Giants at Oracle Park. And Momo's this year is going to be the go-to hang for all the madness this March. We've got TVs outside. We've got plenty of seating inside now at 25%, thanks to the city. Uh scaling back on some of the indoor restrictions and we'll have daily specials going all day dollar oysters five dollar garlic fries couple other food specials and there will be a ten dollar beer and shot special featuring trumer pills and a pro bourbon and a twenty dollar pitcher of trumer pills that's from the first tip uh at nine o'clock in the morning all the way to the final horn at the end of the night for the entire first weekend all tournament long so as we like to say See you at Momo's. Can't wait to see everybody down there. Hoping to get you two down there for a little bit of action as well. That should be some fun. Oh, you'll know I'll be down there, baby. Things were 10 out of 10, Tito. I'm coming back. I always come back. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. Let's phase out of halftime. Let's start the second half here with the third quarter. A really fun topic that I'm looking forward to talking about because, I mean, as we've already sort of touched on, March Madness is just such a special time where individual players and and collective teams you know go down in the history books for just a great you know run of 3 4 5 games in a row it's it's incredible what can happen over the course of March into early April so let's break down our favorite or most memorable tournament team uh of of our lifetimes we can obviously date back to to what before we were born but i think we have some special ones from from you know our youths in our formative years sarge i'll start with you favorite most memorable team let's hear it I was going to say right away, it was at Sarah High School with Bob Christensen's class, of course, uh, and our computer class at Sarah. Um, I fell in love with the 2004-2005 UNC team, and that's when I first became a fan of college basketball. Sean May, big fat guy, just doing work, loved it. But um, Looked like he was 40. <laughs> he looked like he was 45, already balding. But 2008-2009, without a doubt, uh, Ellington, Lawson, Danny Green, Hans Rowe, Larry Drew, Tyler Zeller, Eight NBA players. Everyone hated hands, bro, but he was the type of player where I loved him. Um, so 2008, 2009, UNC Tar Heels. What a great shout out to Bob Christensen, by the way, former <laughs> assistant basketball coach at Sarah High School. I believe coached computer anal- or taught computer analytics and statistics at Sarah. Uh, I know that there at one point was a Sarah High School football draft amongst some of the current staff. I'm not sure if that still happens, but my dad, oh. who was on the coaching staff for a few years, was was invited to one of those drafts and and played alongside Mark Massey, another coach in the basketball program. And I tagged along with them and helped them with a few picks. And I can't remember who I drafted one year. I think I drafted Joe Horn the year after he – I told my dad to draft Joe Horn the year after he used the, the cell phone in the end zone. And Bob Christensen <laughs> looks over at me and he goes, I'd never draft Joe Horn. And I said, well, why, why is that, coach? He goes, guy doesn't have any character. My fantasy teams are all about character. And that, I, that just left a profound mark on me. It's just, wow, you're, you're going to go 4-12 and 12 in fantasy this year if you're basing it off of character, my man. Um, T- 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 I, T- I digress. I got I to gotta pop this in. You, this is the funniest thing ever. We even talk about this. My first, This is hilarious. My first ever fantasy team was because of him. In our class, he made us do a 16-team league, two people per team, fantasy draft for a class. Like, that's Sarah High School for you. I learned how to fantasy. Now look at me. I have eight fantasy leagues per league, and I'm full-blown. So thank you, Bob. Statistics, my man. Statistics. <laughs> Shout out, Bob Christensen. Um, Sabes, as we, let, let's reel, reel us back in, please, Sabes. Favorite, most memorable tournament team for, uh, for you? 
Absolutely. So I'm going with another family connection. And I'm sure people are going to get sick and tired talking about my family. But you know what? This is my podcast with my friends. And these are my takes. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm going with the 2001 Gonzaga Bulldogs. In honor of their 22nd straight tournament this year, the Gonzaga Bulldogs really came to fruition, came to the, the national spotlight probably in 1999, 2000, 2001, when Mark Few took over the reins. That year in 2001, they advanced to the Sweet 16. They beat Virginia and Indiana State. They ultimately lost to Michigan State, who was the one seed and defending national champion the year prior. But that team, to me, kind of made you believe that these underdogs could, could do something in March Madness. They're that Cinderella story. Dan Dickow and Blake Stepp were the one-two combo, combo guard punch wow. for that team. And it, it brought awareness to me who Gonzaga was, who the hell they were, where they were from. And on top of that, my younger brother fell in love with them, too, ended up going there and managing the basketball team. So I'm going with that 2001 Gonzaga Bulldog team. Hopefully they can uh, show us some magic here in this tournament. That is really when it started for Gonzaga, and what a run they have been on. As a, as a proud Santa Clara Bronco, um, I'm like the little brother to the Gonzaga Bulldogs. You know, gr growing up, you know, Gonzaga just gave me a bunch of wedgies and uh, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't look after me and blame me for any sort of spilled milk in the house. But as I've gotten older, I've really grown to respect them and... Uh, they taught me a lot growing up. And, and while I wish Santa Clara could topple them, you know, routinely every single year, you just you can't you can't at all disagree with the fact that Mark Few has just built an outstanding program. And they're they're a perennial contender every single year for a reason. Um, my pick for most memorable uh, is is also, you know, over the course of history has been a perennial contender this particular season. They were not having the best year. They were just on the fringe of the top 25 all season long. I'm going with the 2010, 2011 Kemba Walker led University of Connecticut Huskies. Uh, what that guy did, not only in the NCAA tournament, but going back to the Big East tournament, they entered that tournament nationally ranked at 21. So it was a debate as if, if they were going to get an at large bid had they lost in the Big, Big East tournament. What do they do? Just rattled off as many wins as possible and beat Pittsburgh on a buzzer beater to win that tournament, go into March Madness as a nine seed, and I'm a just unbelievable run taking down Butler in the national championship, who I think was just coming off of losing to Duke the year prior, and, and I think everyone had them slated to win the national championship that year. Brad Stevens coaching them before he moved on to the Celtics. But boy, Kemba Walker will live in history, and in, in that's what I'm talking about. The one shining moment, NCAA March Madness, anything can happen. That UConn team will be remembered forever as an all-time great watch for fans. What, a, what an amazing time. And fun to look back on Gonzaga, North Carolina, countless other teams. As I said, follow us on all social media platforms, at Home Plate Pod. Tell us some of your favorite March Madness stories teams you love to watch, teams you love to hate, everything in between. Okay, ending the third quarter, moving to the fourth quarter. You know, this is what everybody wants, right? They want our picks. They want to tell us that we were wrong. They want to give us the celebration and the adulation if we are right. Let's do some final four and championship picks. Sarge, let's just start off with who's in your final four. I'm going with West Virginia as my little sneaky defensive uh, slate, if you will. West Virginia, Baylor, Gonzaga, Michigan. I know there's three one seeds. College basketball wasn't as strong. I know I was going to take underdogs, but Gonzaga's the best team. Um, I have Gonzaga versus Baylor, and I'm taking Gonzaga all the way, baby. All right, all right. Gonzaga Bulldogs, they, they will be going to title town. They will be the one shining moment team that's left. Saves, who do you got? Similarly, I don't have the probably sexiest uh, Final Four as far as different seedings, but I I've seen these particular teams play a lot this year, so I got to roll with them. I'm going with Gonzaga versus Alabama, and then I'm going Baylor versus Illinois. In the final, I got the Zags versus the Fighting Illini, but I'm going with the Fighting Illini to win it all this year. Reason being, Gonzaga's downfall and in, in recent tournaments past or losing in the tournament has been bigger and more athletic teams that is definitely what illinois is they got a young man named kofi cockburn he's seven feet tall 285 he averages 17 and nine he's a strong man with an even stronger name 
We'll see. Yeah, I, I think I think Illinois will, will will win it this year. But if the Gonzaga Bulldogs win it, I'll be a happy man too. So those are my picks for Final Four in the championship. Sean, win- we gotta we got, we gotta bet the West Virginia Illinois game. Then what it looks like if you're looking down the Midwest bracket, the bottom right. It's Here we defense, go. Defense, defense, defense. I think we're gonna go to Momo's Illinois versus West Virginia. That's the game. I'd, I'd love it. I saw that Zags beat West Virginia this year, so they're beatable. But I'll, I'm down for that. Momo's. I'm fired up. I'm fired up right now. <laughs> my final four, I, I will agree. It is not sexy. I will actually go as far to say that my final four is downright ugly. And you know what? I like it. I like it that way. Scrappy, ugly, crawl into the mud and just fight it out. I've got the number three Kansas Jayhawks squaring off against the number two Alabama Crimson Tide. Yes, I know this is not a football playoff. I know this is the final four. And then I've got number two, Ohio State University going against the number two, Houston Cougars. Okay, that's my final four. So no one seed, three twos and one three in the Kansas Jayhawks. We'll see how that fares for me. I have the Crimson Tide squaring off against the Houston Cougars in the national championship game. And just because I love Houston's head coach, Calvin Sampson, and think he's due for some national recognition and a title, I'm taking Houston to win 82-74. Houston scores a ton of points. I took Cincinnati in the AAC championship game plus 13 and a half and regretted it after the first two minutes of the basketball game. (laughs) Houston Houston is for real, for real. They're going to score a ton of points all tournament long. They are going to be slamming dunks, knocking down threes. I think they play some pretty stout defense too. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this is the best part of the tournament, right? I mean, Sarge, how many... (laughs) How many Final Four teams realistically do you think you're going to have left by the time this thing's all said and done? One is probably going to be West Virginia. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, truth, I just... be, truth be told, saves Gonzaga probably gets there. You know, that's probably your one luck. They find a way to just win when it matters up until the point when they, uh, like you say, come across a team that's just that's just super hungry, like Illinois. Mm-hmm. I think they have the easiest path to Gonzaga. It seems like mm-hmm. their region is. Not the most competitive. We'll see. You, you can't can't get ahead of yourself in March Madness, obviously. But I think they do have the best opportunity to reach the Final Four based off of their seeding in their region. Ah, I have a quick one be, for you, Tito. Yeah, yeah, T- yeah. I was just looking, just looking back on this, the bracket for the one seed. Michigan's going to be the first one seed to fall off. Uh, that's another thing we should have talked about. But anyways, I, th- I see Colorado might have a little upset city alert against Michigan. So that's my call for the the one seed going down first. Yeah, you know, the tough part about the Big Ten, and we were talking about this before the show, you know, they were they played super tough and it was a it was a great conference all season long. But I just don't really know. Does that mean that they like how it happens in football? Are they cannibalizing each other? Are they all too tired, you know, by the time they get to tournament time? Like for me personally, I've got St. Bonaventure beating Michigan nine versus one. Um, and I know that might be a little bit of a stretch, but I, I certainly think that it's possible. Um, yeah. any, anything's possible at that point in the season. So, you know, we'll see. I, I'd certainly love to see Michigan and Juwan Howard. And, you know, they're a one seed for the first time since he was a member of the Fab Five, you know, back in the mid 90s. So that's that's a cool story. But there's something about watching one seeds go down that just uh, <laughs> give me that special feeling inside. I don't know. It just gets me gets me all happy. It makes me want to do a happy dance. It's exciting. <laughs> Um, so we'll see, you know, March madness is what it is. It's complete and total madness. Um, so that wraps up our four quarter segment. We are now going to move to our favorite part. The most exclusive content that we have the two minute warning, uh, locksmith Sarge this week. Uh, you are battling against one of our, one of our followers, also one of our friends. So it's, it's a, it's a fun little rivalry we have going on. Our good friend Clay Mallory, who you guys can follow on Instagram at C underscore Mallory 24. Um, Craig, tell us a little bit about how the early goings have gone and what you guys are playing for. We're playing for a large two topping pizza. It's one mm. bet, one bet per day uh, of fake money, a value of a hundred dollars. So however you want to play it, any prop bet um, took the Warriors versus the Lakers. The Lakers won by 50. So not a good start from the locksmith. I was, I was being Homer Simpson. One of the, one of the good guys, one of the podcast, go Warriors go. And I got, you know, threw a brick in my face by LeBron triple double. So um, not doing that again. So I'm going to play with my head now with my heart. And I'm looking forward to being Clay and never losing a week of the locksmith, Peter. 
<laughs> well, and, you know, just so we all know, the locksmith's not the only one who started off 0-1. Um, our good friend Clay, sorry, bud, got to put you on blast, took the <laughs> under in Bucks wizards 235-and-a-half. I think they scored 235 points midway through the second quarter. Um, that one was that one was over before it started. So both of you guys need to get on the right side of your bets. Looking forward to seeing what's coming. And, and this is what you can expect, you guys, from Beat the Locksmith. OK, this is the two minute two minute warning. They're playing with Monopoly money they're but they're playing for pride and they're playing for delicious pizza. Two toppings. I'm jealous. I wish I jumped in on this first one. A two topping pizza. I think you call that a supreme where most people come from. Oh mm-hmm. man, where would you go? What was your okay? How about those guys? What pizza place in the Bay Area would you hit right now if you won the Locksmith Challenge? I'm going to Toto's. I'm I'm a Toto's guy. Okay, All right. this is this, this is a big debate in the Morton household. Uh oh, I, I mean I mean a, a real big debate. Um, Break so it. my wife loves Round Table. Okay, that's not necessarily like a San Francisco spot, but loves just the classicness of Round Table. Like um, we also we also do Signores. But yes. if I if I really have to if I really have to pick if I'm looking for delicious pizza, I mean I can't go wrong with Tony's Pizza in North Beach. Pretty, That's pretty tasty. One. Yeah, pretty tasty. Yeah, dude, you know your stuff. Good call, Sabes. Are you uh are you are you a are you a pizza guy? I love pizza. <laughs> I love it. If I'm if I'm here on the peninsula, I'm with Craig. It's either Toto's or Round Table. It's kind of what we're beholden here to, in the peninsula here in Belmont. But if I'm up in the city, it, it's definitely I'm hitting up North Beach. I'm going to the Italian district. I'm either doing Tony's or Golden Boy. Oh Those yeah, are my two go to. I would wait. I would wait in a hundred person line at Golden Boy right now if that meant I could get a slice and just uh, be having some fun with my friends. Um, all right, guys, <laughs> this is this has just been all too much fun. March Madness, you know, sticking with the theme of Mad. The episode certainly went a couple different avenues, which was super fun. Next week, we are going to take it to a completely different place. We've done baseball. Now we're doing college basketball. Next week, we're doing NFL free agency. We're going to do the draft. We're going to do the combine. There's a lot going on right now in the NFL, a lot pertaining to the San Francisco 49ers, a lot going on in the NFC West, and just a ton going on across the league in general. So um, looking forward to breaking all that down. I know that that's a sport that, you know, out of everything, the three of us, uh, really love to dive into not only the analytics, but, but you know, the assessment, the signings, all of that stuff. Lots to talk about. So tune in for our next episode on NFL free agency draft and combine. And again, please follow us on all social media platforms. It's the same handle at home plate pod at home plate pod. Okay. Interact with us. Let us know what you're thinking, what you want us to talk about. Picks, beat the locksmith, everything in between. All right, this has been another episode of the Home Plate Podcast brought to you by Fog Coast Productions, and we will see you all very soon.